Hey, welcome everyone to our new devotional series. It's a Christmas series called Preparing for His Coming. I hope you read today's uh, chapter. It was Genesis 3. What an interesting chapter to read to get ready for Christmas, right? Well, wrong, and I'm gonna show you in a second. If you haven't read it, read it, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Many times when we're out for Christmas, we see characters like Santa Claus, Rudolph, Jack Frost, and the Grinch. And all of these stories have become part of our modern celebration of Christmas. But most people, and, and even those who don't go to church regularly, could probably tell you that none of them are the real Christmas story. Because everyone knows that the Christmas story started 2,000 years ago with the birth of Jesus, right? Well, actually, no. The story of Christmas starts at the beginning of the first book of the Bible, at the very beginning of human history in a place about as far removed from our idea of a cozy and snowy Christmas setting as possible. The story begins in the garden, the Garden of Eden. And it was as close to heaven on earth as a place could be. The flowers, were they never withered. The weather was perfect. And if there were bees, they never stung anyone. And if there were flies, well, let's not kid ourselves. There were no flies until sin entered the world. Adam and Eve didn't have to worry about hunger or animal attacks. They were at perfect peace with each other. And God, the Bible says God even walked with them in the garden. But something happened that plunged this perfect world into the conflict that still rages today. Something that causes all the suffering on the planet. The very first sin was committed. Now, you may think of sin as breaking a rule, but as we see in the Eden story, sin is simply disbelieving God's word and disobeying his will. From the moment Eve disbelieved and disobeyed, everything and everyone has been infected by sin. Roses have thorns. Airports need metal detectors. Cities need cemeteries. People put pineapples on pizza. Sin has poisoned more than the world around us. It's poisoned ourselves. Why do we do things what we know we should not do? And why don't we do things that we know we should do? The truth is something is wrong in our hearts. And this is where the Christmas story starts. You see, you can't fully celebrate Jesus' birth until you understand the need for him to be born. Christmas night can't make sense unless you understand the absolute, unconditional, enormous, massive necessity of a savior. Now, I want to read you something. It's from Romans 5, 2. This is what it says. It says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, that man being Adam, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. It was all humanity that sinned along with Adam. And all humanity was separated from God until the beautiful, wonderful day that God sent his son to earth Christmas day to take away the sins of the world eventually. You see, God never leaves a problem unsolved. In the same moment since sin entered the world, God had the solution ready and he revealed it almost immediately in a single verse, holding hope for the entire world and we find it right in our reading of Genesis 3. I wanna read to you Genesis 3 verse 15. It says this, I will put enmity between you and a woman, in between your offspring and her offspring, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The serpent would bruise the heel of the Savior, but the Savior would trample the head of the serpent. You don't have to be a doctor to know which injury is worse, a bite to the foot or a boot stomp to the head. Sin was going to be defeated. We were to be rescued. Now, you may have never heard this verse referred to as the first Christmas story, but that's exactly what it is. It's the very first verse in the Bible that tells of a Savior who would bring us salvation from our sins. But let's look at the very first word used to describe the baby, Jesus. It's found in probably the most familiar uh, Christmas verse in the Bible, Luke 2, 11. And it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The very first word used to describe the baby Jesus is Savior because that's what the world had been waiting for all those long years since Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Um, and only when we understand our need for a Savior can we fully experience and celebrate this birth of Jesus. So with every Christmas movie we watch, with every cookie we bake and every carol we sing, 
and every decoration we hang, let these words echo in your heart. I need a savior and here he is. I hope you enjoyed this devotional as much as I did.